giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. There we go. We got to turn the microphone on. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome uh, to, well, the University Build Challenge. The robots are uh, completed, question mark, right, with uh, some interesting uh, designs uh, as well that we're going to be showing off here today. And, of course, we're going to be showing some uh, match play as well, too, so you can see how these robots interact. Now, I'm going to guess these robots will not be the ones that are on the final fields this year. Uh, however, it's some good things for you guys to learn, uh, and we'll definitely talk about uh, some neat things with this as well. So we have uh, two teams uh, here on today, actually four robots. Each of the colleges had two teams. So we have uh, University of Nevada, Reno, and University of Nevada, Vegas online. We're going to be talking with them a bit more about their designs, what they've done since kickoff, some of their strategies, some things that have failed for them. Uh, as well, too. I'm your host, Tyler Olds, here uh, for the show. And don't forget, hey, guys, we've got a pretty cool giveaway today. Uh, if you watched last night's show, uh, you have an opportunity to win. Uh, a 36 mechanic wheel roller set, uh, blank canvas here from gobuilda.com. Uh, go and check it out, by the way. There's some really cool uh, colors that they've been doing. They want to see what colors you're going to come up with uh, as well, too. So very exciting stuff. Uh, all you have to do in order to win uh, is you have to make sure you click that little follow button near the top of your screen. That gives you a chance to enter, and then you're going to type in a keyword uh, that we tell you uh, near the end of the show. Uh, if you'd like to uh, get more chances to win, uh, we do. Uh, it's kind of pay to play. We say we rig it for our subscribers where subscribers do get five times luck to win on all giveaways uh during the show uh so make sure you do that you can do so for free if you or your parents have amazon prime or twitch prime in that aspect uh or for just a few bucks a month and tier one subs right now are half off uh so keep fun loud live and independent get some cool go build giveaways and we can't wait to learn more about these fantastic teams uh so we're gonna uh, start out just having a real quick introduction here uh, from each of our teams uh when we start with uh university of nevada reno Hello, we're the University of Nevada Reno. I'm part of team 775. We just made up a team number and went with it. My name is Price Poston and I'm a CSE major in my final year. My name is Will. I'm also a CS major in my final year here at UNR. Um, I had a lot of fun building this robot and we'll see how it goes. Hello, I'm Bryson. I'm a graduate student at the university studying computer science. And I'm Jamie. I'm the captain of the grad team. This is the undergrad team. I'm also studying computer science and engineering. Howdy. Um, I'm Travis. Uh, this is Nick. Um, I guess since you guys at uh, UNR did 775, 702 A and B. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, I'm the uh, vice president of the uh, UNLV robotics group here. Um, I'm the president president of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers at UNLV. Well, uh, I mean, obviously, the, the time restriction, we, we wanted to do, uh, you know, at least one thing really good and really fast. Um, you know, like, obviously, with the, with the build season, you know, you, you can you have all the ideas at once, and then you try to figure out what's the most reasonable for your team. And, you know, that's when you have, you know, several, uh, several weeks to get ready. And we had 31 hours, so it was like, all right, well, obviously, with this game, you know, it's just – Get the cube and be able to, you know, get it on the platform effectively. And at that point, you know, once you get to that point, you know, maybe you can start branching off. And um, but you know, with 31 hours, you know, obviously you're pretty limited. So it was like, you know, do at least one thing pretty effectively. 
And looking yeah. at uh, yeah, you guys' role, let's take a look at this one here. You guys have two robots, right? So we can uh, maybe grab this one or both of them here. But let's take a look at this first one. You mind giving kind of the lowdown on um, what this robot's capabilities are? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, we can uh, we can have a demonstration here. Uh, we have both robots here. Um, each of us, we, uh, we both went with an arm. Uh, and then just your basic, uh, we, we only had the kit, so we just had the basic Omni wheels in the front. Uh, traction in the back. Um, the grappling was uh, fairly, fairly simple, um, and then we we had enough uh, we had enough time to develop a wrist for the front of ours, so we could have the ability to score in the back. And how about the second robot we have there as well? Yeah, so um, this is our robot. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. It's right there. It's a little bit different. Let me back up. So. For ours, we kind of went like a little basic. We just built like an arm going up, so it's going up right there. So it goes up like that, and it opens, and just closes to grab the bricks or anything else, um, and just goes back down. So right there, and right there. So it's like a like a basic approach that we tried to that we tried to take. All right, you and uh, you and R, let's uh, let's focus back up here, guys. And uh, what let's talk about your robots a little bit, and then we'll kind of dive in a bit more uh, about these capabilities in both ones. So you guys built two robots as well. Why don't you show those off? Sure, Bryson. Do you want to grab this robot and Price grab that one? So our main idea with our robots was that this robot was the pusher, so it was going to push blocks into the area where the second robot would be able to stack. Um, because we were on alliance, like pre, like already set on our alliance, we kind of strategized like an alliance would. So this robot is very, very fast. It has a gear ratio of one to eight uh, increase. So you'll probably see that in the matches a lot, but it has a servo here to collect blocks. Um, and one important thing about this robot is that it is able to detect using computer vision, the sky stones. So that's one of its main features during autonomous. For this robot, it was originally intended to be a stacker. Um, however, we weren't able to get the linear slide working. So it is now, uh, it has a little bit of an arm trying to flip blocks onto the side of the foundation. So even though we're not able to stack with the, like, with this main kind of sky tower challenge, um, we are still able to gain points uh, via pushing blocks onto the foundation. Um, but yeah, that's the basis of our robot so, so far here. This is 1337 and this is 775, if that helps distinguish them. So when you guys were looking at uh, your two robots, uh, once again, you guys were looking at essentially building together, right? Or uh, competing in alliance together, is that correct? Yes, yeah. Okay, and then uh, uh, for UNLV, uh, you guys, are, are you looking at are competing against Alliance? Are you looking at competing against each other? What's kind of the, the thought and the game plan behind that? Yeah, well, so, um, yeah, I'll take this one. so we kind of built our robots separately, so we eventually like came together to try and figure out like the best game plan to try and tackle to try and win. So I guess it was kind of an independent but also collaborative thing that we did with, um, with one another, but... Um, so we basically just try to figure out like what's the best strategy. So we just, you know, we figured out that all right, we're just gonna, you know, go for blocks. One guy's gonna have like a certain task. So it's just more of like working together and just kind of like deliberating tasks. And it kind of relates to it kind of relates to what we do. Um, and I'm sure you know there's a bunch of high schools around that kind of have the same idea. You know, on that first build day. And you probably split up into different teams and you're like, oh, hey, you know, what's the, what's the best strategy? What's the best, you know, uh, method of winning? And then you then you kind of can come together and say, oh, hey, we came up with this and we came up with this. Because, you know, as a group, sometimes the ideas can get lost. And uh, so it was kind of like that. But we had a little bit more of a robot going in once we came together to talk about what we wanted to do. So let's talk about some of the challenges, uh, teams that you had, uh, University of Nevada, Reno. As you guys were going through this challenge, uh, what kind of obstacles did you uh, approach or have troubles with? What were you able to overcome and what things were you not able to overcome uh, during this build process? So one of the th main things that defines our teams here is that we only have the minority of our team members actually have experience with first at all. 
So myself and Price here have experience with first, but Will and Bryson do not. So, and because the first alumni were kind of uh, a couple years back from the first games, we weren't familiar with like the Rev uh, uh, expansion hubs or Android Studio or things like that. So a lot of the first day was kind of just getting comfortable with uh, the new um, control systems that first had to offer and how we were able to build a first robot in general. And then we were kind of able to apply our strategies that we came up with during the kickoff. So yeah, that was one challenge that we had. What were some of kind of the, the cool things that maybe come with that? I know you guys were doing some 3D printings of things. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Say that again? Uh, you guys were doing some things with 3D printing on your robot, right? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, actually, one of our members has a new puppy, so he's not able to leave his house a lot, but he has a 3D printer. So one of our members, uh, a mechanical engineer, uh, was able to 3D design and or design in CAD a capstone. Um, and this capstone was completed in 19 hours. We were thinking, we were trying to have a time lapse up, but we weren't able to get that up. But it is basically um, designed in CAD based off the elements here. We had like a set of calipers and designed it based on the actual measurements. Um, we learned a lot about that actually, but because of the 19 hour build time, um, we weren't able to iterate like we wanted to. For example, fitting these little nubs here are designed to fit on top of the stones, but they're such a tight fit that you're not able to really have any play, any room for error. So that was one of the things that we were thinking of improving after this 3D print was done, but we don't have enough time for that. So, yeah. So let's talk uh, uh, UNLV. Uh, as you guys were looking at the game challenge, and I see you got a couple props in your hand here. Uh, how about for you? What uh, challenges uh, did you need to try to overcome? And then what are some maybe cool attributes or things that you guys got to try out? Well, we kind of we kind of had a similar idea with the capstone. You know, try to make it you know, something easy to three D print out and uh, see how things will kind of conform to the field. And uh, we wanted to have something that kind of represented like the Las Vegas theme, so we kind of made it look like a stack of poker chips. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh, and then we made the we made the inside like really open and hollow. We we noticed that the you know from corner to corner on the tops is what about like two inches or so. So we opened it up to about three inches, so it would it have a lot of play and. We had we went through a couple of like really quick revisions on it because uh, this is like what, a nine hour print or something like that so it was like okay quick figure it out and then once we had the right parameters it was like okay you know we're good to go so it's kind of kind of interesting how we had similar uh, similar comparisons there like we uh, I mean we checked in with the webcast but uh, like like we would yeah we tried to kind of keep keep separate on that yeah and um, so you talked about some of the issues that we ran into. So similar to Reno, most of our, our members that worked on our, our robot didn't have experience in first competitions. So this was entirely new to us. So, I mean, like one of the things was getting two phones. We were, we were like literally like, what do we do with these? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and also another big thing was the, um, was the coding. So none of us ever used JavaScript. So we literally just learned it in a day. So I, I, I feel like we, we accomplished a lot. My team did very good. Um, and we kind of, we really had to push to try to accomplish all this. So, so you guys use JavaScript on there, uh, University of Nevada, Reno, what did you guys use for programming? And can you talk a little bit about the uh, open CV testing you did as well? Yeah, sure. Um, we use Java, uh, for our pro uh, programming, uh, using Android Studio specifically. Um, we originally were trying to use a uh, raw open CV, the open computer vision library. Um, but we were having trouble getting that to build. Um, while we were on stream, some of the people in chat suggested Doge CV, so Doge Computer Vision, um, and we thought it was kind of a joke at first because of the name, but we tried it out and we were eventually able to get it to build. One of our team members, Kaylor, who I think went home already, but he spent about a good like five to five hours last night, overnight, trying to get that to build, and we finally did. Um, so yeah, one of the, it was just crazy the how much difficulty we had just getting the package to build. But once we did, um, Bryson here had already made a proof of concept in Python, a different language, um, that doesn't have as much issues with that package. And we were able to implement that like really quick after we got that to build. So, yeah. 
Um, looking, uh, by the way, chat, uh, if you have any questions for uh, either of our teams, make sure you take at first updates now in chat and we'll get to those questions. Uh, you can really ask these guys anything uh, in regards to their experiences uh, or how things may be uh, manipulated with the field or with different aspects. Love to be able to field those as well. Uh, before we uh, go a little bit further and don't worry, we're going to be showing matches soon. We're going to start our giveaway uh, from our friends at Go Build Us. So if you're interested in winning, uh, once again, a 36 pack of Mechanum Roller Wheels. Uh, it's a good time in there, Jim. That's all you got to do is ask and it happens, right? Uh, but if you're interested in doing that, we're going to use the, uh, the catchphrase that they're really known for, go build a or go home. Uh, that is going to be the keyword you need to type in the chat uh, in order to be eligible to win. Don't forget, you do need to click follow in order to be eligible. If we draw your name and you're not following the channel, guess what? We're going to redraw again. Sucks to be you. And we'll uh, keep moving forward. If you are a subscriber and you choose to help... Uh, uh, support the stream. We're going to give you five times chance to win. You can do so for free through Twitch Prime or for just a couple of bucks a month. Tier one subs half off right now. Help us stay loud, live, and independent here on First Updates Now. Once again, go Billa or go home is going to be the question. So we have a couple uh, questions coming in that I want to take as well. Uh, Camp Nino uh, asks on here says, uh, uh, wait, so they created a Python program and plugged it into Java. Is that correct? I'm going to guess that's for you and LV. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, oh, I'll give guys. that to Bryson, actually, to talk about that. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, the question is, uh, did you create a Python program and plug it into Java? Um, so, kind of. OpenCV has bindings for a lot of languages. Um, I'm a big fan of OpenCV. I am not a big fan of Java. So, as a way of avoiding writing code in Java and making Kaler deal with the compile issues for me, I just wrote all the code in Python and was like, hey, this works. Just make it work on our robot for me. Um, which was great. I love that kind of build process. Um, probably none of my teammates do, but it was great for me. Very cool. Um, something I just want to update because I, I accidentally spelled Go Builder wrong. It is the correct way to spell it. G-O-B-I-L-D-A. That's the correct spelling for it, guys. Just a heads up uh, on that as well. Uh, so we have a question for UNLV. Uh, how did you use JavaScript on your robot? Uh, aren't the options blocks, onbot, and AS Java? And that's from Broadwell Skylake. Well, fun fact, you're the, you're not the programmer here, side. No, I mean, um, so a lot of our Java was like, at, like, like I said, we, we really didn't know JavaScript. So it was a lot of Googling, um, asking the robotics team for help. So it was, it was a lot of research to, to go into that, but, um, maybe you could go more into depth of the process. All right. So to talk about what we did, I'm going to have you, uh, talk to our lead programmer, Arnold. Okay. I'm Arnold, I was a, I'm the lead programmer. Uh, yeah, so we, we uh, both use Java uh, in Android Studios, and uh, there, there's a lot of examples, thankfully, in the, um, as, in the uh, project that, uh, that that first gives us. So we were, so we were able to collaborate and figure out how to do, how to use all the sensors and how to move, move all the motors that we needed to get the, get the robots in the condition that, that they are now. All right, very cool. Thanks for uh, joining in there. And uh, a couple other questions uh, that we have uh, as well, too, is uh, it says uh, for uh, UNR, uh, Stealth X051 says, did you all, did y'all, I don't know how you how all pronounce it, uh, did y'all uh, try to use the built-in Doge CV detectors? That would probably be a question best asked to someone who is sitting off to the side here. Oh, well, let's just keep bringing on more people. Why not? That's, you know, we can just keep doing that. Does anyone want to talk about Doge? Yeah, Kayla yeah. wants to talk about Doge. All right, let's Here's bring them on. Doge expert. All right, very cool. <laughs> so I was the person that Bryson was talking about when I was solving the compile issues. So the trouble that I was having is trying to get OpenCV to work in Android Studio, and there are a bunch of different ways that we could do it, but specifically with the FTC package because the way that it works is you want to actually have the image in your loop function that you're inheriting from from the FTC controller. And it took a while for us to actually solve that. So at about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, I solved the import issues. But Doge CV, the writers of that package, had problems with memory leaks. <laughs> so as soon as we started it on our phone, after about 15 seconds, it crashed the phone, the, the controller, so we wouldn't be able to do anything on the robot anymore. So we had to go in and fix that. And that was the fastest bug that I've ever fixed at 5 in the morning, for sure. 
So you guys pulled it. You guys ended up pulling an all nighter, right? Uh, so uh, you and LV, did you guys uh, pull all night as well? Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Thirty one hours. Yeah. Excellent. So as as we look at as we kind of reflect back in this process, uh, we're gonna we'll give you a chance to kind of do come some last uh, comments before we get into a couple matches. But uh, I'll start with you and LV. Uh, what is something that if as teams are approaching? Uh, this challenge, what advice would you give them as they start to tackle uh, the Skystone challenge and, and move forward throughout the competition season? So number one thing, and it's kind of something that our strategy, um, you know, we tried to, with the intake, the uh, progression, you know, we tried to have a, a rolling intake at first, and then we decided to just have more of a clamp because that was kind of what time let us do. Uh, but for those of you who, you know, that use the clamp, notice how on the, uh, on the, the, the uh, stones. What are the stones called? Uh, the what? The stone. No, the special stones. Sky stone. Sky stones. Yes, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> it's. It, I've been awake for a while. Oh yeah. But on the sky stones, the side with the with the sticker on it, it's significantly more slippier on that side. Slippier. Yes. All right. Very cool. How about uh, University of Nevada Reno? As you guys look at this uh, challenge, and we have uh, thousands of teams that are going to be competing in Skystone. Uh, what advice do you give to them based on the things that you've learned here uh, in the last uh, uh, twenty some odd hours? You know, our biggest goal here was to show. Um, I know a lot of teams are kind of in, uh, intimidated by computer vision, but our biggest goal was to show that computer vision can be done pretty quickly. And uh, besides a few build issues, it was very, very simple to use the correct package to uh, find the correct sky stone and uh, bring it, bring it under the sky bridge uh, for those Atanas points. Yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead. So, so yeah, to clarify, the computer vision code was incredibly short. Um, so anyone who's intimidated by computer vision, literally all I did was I took a picture at the starting spot. Um, to figure out where the um, stones were, I broke it up into three groups, and then I just counted whichever of those three groups had the fewest number of yellow pixels, and that was the stone we went towards. Um, it's about three lines of code um, to do that. So a lot of stuff like this um, doesn't have to be difficult, and I think it's good um, if you don't have to deal with build issues um, to try to go for that sort of stuff, because you can get a lot of points from doing so, and it doesn't necessarily need to be difficult. So um, I'll start with the University of Nevada Reno here. Uh, as you guys uh, look at your robots, what are some last things you want to tell the audience about uh, before we go into these actual matches and draw for our giveaway? Um, be ready to adapt. You're going to run into a lot of problems and a lot of issues, and you're going to have to change the design of your robot a lot as you go through, so don't get stuck on one idea if it's not working. Anybody else? I'd have to, I'd have to say, don't be afraid to play defense. Defense could be a very important part of this game because the zones you're getting your blocks on are on opposite sides of the field, so there'll be a lot of interaction with the opposing alliance. All right, and let's go to our UNLB team. Uh, what are what are some last things uh, you wanna you wanna kind of talk about um, in regards to your robots before we show them off? Uh, on their robots. Yeah. So for our robots, um, I would say you know think simple. But also, you know, be ready to put in the work to, to make a great robot. You know, um, you know, great things kind of take time. And I think that even though we're a little slower in the process, uh, we made a great robot, you know, for our first, one of our first robots. So just be ready to take your time, take it easy, and um, just have fun. And as, as for this game, I mean, the, the coordination with your alliance is going to have to be through the, I mean, something that obviously uh, Reno brought it up was, you know, we, we don't have to worry about the defense so much, but with the, on the surface, this, this game looks pretty simple. But once you start to get in and once you realize, like, you know, the, the flow of the game is going to be going in an X pattern, the, the coordination you're going to have to have with your own alliance is, is going to have to be stellar for this game. Uh, one last question we had from Gamers2333. Uh, are you planning on releasing uh, your code at all? Uh, and they're saying this would be, uh, would it be helpful to understand computer computer vision better? I'm not quite sure on that second question there, but are you planning on releasing code uh, at all for this? We'll, we'll definitely release the code. Um, I would not recommend looking at any code I write for learning anything. Um, that's a terrible <laughs> idea. Um, 
Yeah, we wrote everything at 5 a.m. It's, it's not the sort of code you would want to uh, look up to necessarily, but yeah, we'll absolutely release it. <laughs> How about you guys over at uh, uh, UNLV? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But uh, same, same story. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, was, it was written in a couple hours, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, let's go ahead and uh, do the uh, drawing uh, for the uh, uh, mechanic rollers. We're going to actually ask our two teams to start getting ready for the matches here. So you guys uh, can go ahead and start doing that. And we're going to draw for the uh, giveaways as we go through once again from our friends at GoBuilda. And Go Build or Go Home, spelt correctly, uh, since I didn't do that last time, uh, is going to be the uh, keyword for that. Uh, and both teams, you guys can start getting ready uh, for the uh, setup there. And uh, turn off the microphone if you don't mind on the left-hand side there. Perfect. Uh, so Go Build or Go Home, that's the uh, keyword once again. And the winner of that is going to be, you know, if I hit the roll-up button, uh, it's going to be uh, Jeffrey Suko. Jeffrey Suko, congratulations. You have won the Go Build a Giveaway. Please make sure you reach out to us. Uh, the first update is now either on Twitch or at our Discord. Uh, not a subscriber, by the way. So you see non-subs, you can win too. Uh, but congratulations to you for winning that uh, for the sweet Go Build a Giveaway. Uh, so we're going to let uh, our teams, as you see, starting to prepare uh, the matches. Uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes. I'm just going to show some videos uh, from the UNR stream uh, as we prepare for these new matches. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. Matches coming up in just a few minutes. Stand by. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.